To begin your magazine cover, you're going to first start in Photoshop to make the cover photo picture. You're going to go to um, go online, find a model shoot that you like, of someone you like, and you're going to grab that in Photoshop. But the first thing you want to do is set up a Photoshop document that matches the same dimensions as the cover page in InDesign. So as you open up Photoshop, you're going to go to Create New, and you're going to do a letter size piece of paper. So width is eight and a half. It's going to be inches here and height is 11. Your resolution is going to be 300. You want it to be clear and crisp for printing. Keep that at pixels an inch. Your color mode, we can. it should be CMYK, but since you're pulling the picture from online, just keep it at RGB for now. We'll worry about that later, but in, if you were doing this on a professional level, you would make sure that the color mode is changed to CMYK. Once you have these settings, eight and a half inches by 11 and resolution 300, hit create. This is gonna give you your background layer. So at this point, it's important for you to find a model photo that you like. Again, your cover design needs to be a cover of a magazine in which your audience, I mean your client would appear. So if, you, if your client is Delta, for instance, that would probably appear in Travel Magazine. So your photo for Travel Magazine would be a travel-related photo. I'm going to do Rolling Stone Magazine because I talked about it in the last tutorial on how to set up the magazine. And I did a quick search for Billie Eilish prior to starting this. And... I did Billie Eilish model shoot just so I could get some actual model style photos instead of you know some tabloid cell phone photos I want it to be professional looking but you want to make sure when you're in your Google search that you change your size of your image to large so you click tools and you make sure that this says large So at this point, you want to scroll through the photos and look for something that is magazine cover worthy. Um, it's completely up to you on what style of magazine that you're designing. And, you know, removing the background, that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that you're working with a portrait style photo. So something like this would not work because by the time you made it in portrait, she would be too zoomed in. Um, but something like this would be great because you would put the name plate behind her head and you have enough room on the side for your cover lines. So I'm going to grab this one. The dimensions are 846 by 1164. That is pushing it for size, but um, we could try, but it's better to find something that's about a thousand width pixels at least. Also, this already has a name plate on it for Vanity Fair. So you would have to Photoshop that out. So let's find another photo that doesn't have that on there. Where's one at the top? Let's just go to this one here. This one is 1280 by 1920. That's a really good size. So we're going to save this. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one because we are pulling it into Photoshop, so copying is just, is, is okay. So I'm going to do copy image, and I'm going to open up Photoshop, and I'm going to paste. Command V, paste. So Photoshop isn't like InDesign in that you don't have to hold down shift. So don't worry about holding down shift. Just grab at the corners. It will automatically keep the dimensions for you. We're going to increase the size of this photo to the size of my cover photo area, however big I want the photo to be. Keeping in mind that I need room for the nameplate to go across and behind her head and for the cover lines to go down. Once you like the size of the photo, you can just hit enter or click off in the pasteboard and it will deselect the photo. The next thing you want to do is get rid of your background file. So grab your background layer and drag it to the trash can. 
This will show you the parts of the of the design that are clear and the parts of the design that need to be removed. So for the magazine, I definitely want to remove everything behind her body. This one is actually kind of awkward because it has the black off to the side. Her legs actually end. So this would either, you would either have to add some kind of black line or something to fake it, or you'd have to find another photo that goes from edge to edge. Um, just make sure that when you're finding whatever photo it is that it fills the space accordingly and it doesn't look it doesn't cut off anything so since we've already begun the tutorial tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and just go with this one but as I said um, in order for it to look right you would have to draw some kind of black line and fill this in to fake it so just don't make it hard on yourself and find an image that actually goes from edge to edge appropriately um, it, I could also zoom in and see what it, how much space she fills. Let's zoom out a little bit. Command minus. So zoom in. So go from edge to edge. Actually, that would work. Let's just do that. So going from edge to edge, her legs go from one side of the cover to the other side of the cover. I still have enough room for the nameplate, and I still have room for cover lines going down the side without overlapping any pivotal information like her face, eyes, mouth, nose, etc. So I'm going to hit enter. And you may recall from the Photoshop lecture we did a few weeks ago where in order to remove a background, you want to turn on the quick mask. You don't want to erase information with, with the actual eraser tool because you won't be able to re-add it. So using the quick mask tool, you can paint on and paint off um, if you mess up. So you can always paint the content back on instead of erasing it permanently. So I'm going to click her layer and click this quick mask square, so square with the circle on the inside, to activate my quick mask. And if you look closely, you'll see this layer is activated. It has the little corners around it to show me that everything I do for, uh, for right now is going to be on this layer and not the actual photo layer. I'm going to turn on my brush tool, and I'm going to click, I'm going to right click on the photo, to see the side size of my brush, I can adjust it and just hover over to see how big that brush is. And then also make sure that it's a very soft brush. 100% hardness would be would create a perfect circle, whereas the um, closer to anything closer to zero is going to be more like a, a a hazy brush. Once you have that the way you want, you can just start clicking in. Let's make sure that the black is turned on. To turn black on, you need to talk, hit this little toggle button to bring black to the front. Then you can start painting off. If you want to paint back on, you would just use the toggle button to switch white to the front, and then you can paint those colors back on. So I'm going to bring the black to the front and start removing the background of this photo. I'm going to do it loosely for the part that's not close to her for now. And then I will zoom in and get the other stuff in a second. See, I just messed up on her leg. I can re-add it in a second. So I'm going to just loosely delete the background. Turn my white back on, paint her leg back on. Turn my black on, and now I'm going to zoom in. I just did that with Command Plus. If you want to zoom in manually, you can go to View, Zoom In. So at this point, I'm going to sh uh, shrink the size of my brush so I can get the granule detail around her hair without deleting any of her hair. I'm going to decrease the size. I mean, that's too small. And delete the rest of the information. This can be very, very tedious depending on how much hair the model has, how frizzy it is, how curly it is, etc. But as long as you zoom in, you can see the detail really, really well. And 
if you mess up, you can paint it back on. So don't worry about making it perfect the first time. I'm going to shrink the size of the brush by hitting right click and get this little area around her elbow. And then turn the white back on and paint the black back on. I'm going to right click, increase the size of my brush again, and paint along her leg. The reason it's hazy like that is because I have a soft brush turned on. If you want to prevent that from happening, you can, cre you can increase the hardness of the brush when you're going around hard edges like her pants. So I'm going to increase the hardness and I'm going to turn my white on so I can paint this black back on. Again, bring the black forward. Let's zoom in again. Another way around this is if you turn on your polygonal lasso tool, you can click along the space, anything that's like a flat edge, and click along the space. Go back to the beginning of that line and connect it with that circle. Once it's connected, you can turn your brush back on and paint everything within that line. To remove the marching ants, you just hit Command D or Control D if you're on a PC and remove it. The jagged edges you can fix with your brush, just going back into those little creases and, and making it as perfect as you as you need. Sorry, it keeps doing that. You just want to get to a point that um, looks like you want. Again, um, you could spend hours on this part, really. I mean, just making it as detailed and as perfect as you want. I just want to get through this section just to show you the basics so you can move on on your own. So I'm going to turn my brush back on to a soft brush now that I'm around her hair again so I don't remove any, don't make her hair look jagged at all.
All right, zoom out so we can see our progress. And then you would just go through here and get it as, as perfect as you possibly can. So at this point, you want to save it as the Photoshop layer. You don't want to export it as a PNG or a JPEG. Just because if you need to make additional changes, it's easier to edit the Photoshop file and it'll automatically populate in InDesign. And I'll show you in a second. So you want to save this in your magazine file folder. So save as and go to your Creative Cloud files, PR4405 magazine, Billy and cover photo. Save it as Photoshop. Hit save. Then you will open your InDesign file, the magazine that we've already made. So you'd go into your magazine folder, open up your magazine InDesign file. And in draft mode, you can zoom out just a little bit. You're going to create a rectangle from the bleed line all the way to the fold line. And you're going to do file, place, and find that cover photo in that area. So you can see that I didn't get everything that I wanted. So see there's some pink left over, some orange left over. So I can go back in and fix that. So at this point I'm just going to save my file. I don't know why I did that. I should just save it. And go into Photoshop. And I'm going to turn on a white layer in the back so I can see the issues more clearly. So I'm going to go to create new layer. I'm going to go to edit, fill, and fill it with white. Hit OK. Then I'm going to move that layer to the back. It's still hard to see, but you can see a faint orange line. At the And once you get it to a good stopping point, you'll delete this white layer and move it to the trash can. And then you will hit save. File, save. And when you open up your InDesign file, you'll see this little error symbol pop up. You'll only see it if you're in draft mode. If you're in preview mode, it won't show up. But you can see right now the pink that's left over around the edges. When I double click that error symbol, it's going to automatically update for me. So you can see the pink basically disappeared. So at that point, you will save your magazine and you will start working on your nameplate.